ab. Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. We're ready to our um, webinar today. Um, we are talking about um, hardware today. Um, I'm your uh, referent, um, Martina Prozzo. Welcome to my home office here. Um, Thomas is joining us as well. Um, oh. He will answer your questions and uh, forward them to me if you have any or answer them directly. So um, today I want to do, talk to you about live inputs. Um, in general, which ones do we sell right now um, and how do they work in, in our software? So at first, I'd like to give you an overview of the available video input cards right now. And I'm very excited to also include the 12G SDI card, which will be released either today or tomorrow. We are not sure yet. Um, so it's a very brand new Red Hot card um, that you will be the first ones to have some information about. Um, I will go through each of the cards. Um, so I have a sheet for them and we will cover what kinds of inputs do I have there, what kinds of um, video formats can I process through the card, um, what about audio, um, what about the adapters and, the, and so on. After all the cards, I want to talk shortly about the driver situation um, because with the new release, um, we will change something with the drivers, we will see. And Afterwards, on the last slide, I have some information about how to configure the inputs um, because this is done in our software and, of course, also how to use this in the manager. So before we get started uh, with the technical details, um, this is an overview. So these are the cards that we, uh, that we sell right now. Uh, we have the DVI input cards that come with one or two ports. We have the HDMI input card that comes with two ports always. We offer the 3G SDI input card um, with one or two or four ports. And last, our new uh, member to the family, the 12G card. In fact, it has this very monstrous name. It's a 12G slash quad 3G SDI plus an HDMI display port um, board. Um, but of course, this is kind of a tongue twister, so I will just refer to it as the 12G card. So let's start with the DVI input card and um, all the details about it. Um, but first, one additional information. Um, all of the boards do not process any HTCP protected signals. Of course, we are a media server, um, we read the signal, we can manipulate it, we can add effects to it and all that, and we distribute the signal through our um, yeah, network, and um, so we do not have any HTCP management in there, so this applies to all of the cards. So let's get started with the DVI input card. We as I've mentioned already, we have the single and the dual version available. It's simply how many inputs you have on there, but all the other information applies to both versions. The DVI card supports the digital version as well as the analog version of the DVI signal. And it supports the single link and the dual link DVI signals. This is not to be confused with the number of ports. This is the name of the um, of the signal itself, how it was defined. Um, it, um, it comes from the bandwidth that you can push through a single link cable or a dual link cable. Um, the single link uh, bandwidth allows full HD at 60 um, FPS and the dual link version uh, gives us the possibility to, also, to go higher with the bandwidth um, and the resolution included in there. Um, so we can um, support custom resolutions, for example, um, one where you have doubled uh, the width of the HD signal. Um, if you've ever wondered about it, uh, it's simply the number of uh, connectors that you use in the DVI cable itself or connector. Um, so the simplest version is the DVI analog one. You have, um, these are the, the four connectors surrounding this uh, this one slide here, 
and you have those connectors that are used for the analog signal. If you go to the digital signal only, you those pins are not used in here, um, but you have added some more connectors. If you double the bandwidth to go for dual link, you are using those six in there as well, those six connectors. And if you uh, combine the digital and the analog signal, you get this DVI integrated cable. Um, so in here you have all the pins connected. Um, so this is just why they are named like this. But indeed for the card itself, you don't have to worry about it. In here, all the pins are connected and we process all the other signals um, that you input there. Um, few people know, but you can actually also process audio through a DVI signal. However, this is not supported by our card. And lastly, I just like to give you some information about the resolution that um, that you can uh, process through the card um, based on the most common 16 to 9 or 4 to 3 image ratios. Um, for the DVI analog signal, this is the largest 4 to 3. Uh, resolution and this is the largest 16 to 9 resolution. Same applies to the DVI single link, uh, sing, a DVI digital single link uh, format and if you then double up to dual link you can either double the frame rate from the HD signal or as we have done up here you can double the width. It's simply the calculation of the bandwidth that you are using. This would be the largest four to three image ratio at 60 hertz. Um, Thomas, do we have any questions so far for the DVI signal? Other words, no. Otherwise, I would go. Not okay. until now. Before. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I would go to the HDMI card. This one comes with two ports um, always. Uh, we ship it with a display port adapter. So you can connect also, for example, a um, player or a server um, to it um, if you want to. HDMI itself is always backwards compatible with DVI. So it doesn't matter whether you have a DVI or an HDMI or display port signal, all of them can be processed by this board. And um, importantly, for the DVI conversion, there is no adapter included, but you can pretty much take any um, anyone. Uh, you can also use passive adapters for this conversion because it's just a simple pin-to-pin -pin connection in there. So there's no um, signal quality loss when you do that. Again, there are no audio formats supported. And for the resolution, um, I've written down some of the most common um, standard uh, 16 to 9 formats. Um, so here we have the HD signal at 120 hertz um, or a 4 to 3 image, uh, no, a larger one with 2K. Um, we have here an H UHD signal or a 4, 4K signal. Of course, um, other resolutions are also supported and for all of them, the frame rates um, between 24 and 120, um, they depend a little bit on the format itself, but um, the commonest ones are all supported. The last information regarding this card is since the last uh, version 6.4.0, we have added another chroma subsampling option. Um, so we have always supported the UHV version. Um, and we have now added the 444 um, color resolution to it. You can set this one up in when you configure the card. I will show this to you later on, just so that you have, have heard of it already. Um, Thomas, are there any questions regarding the HDMI card? Yes, there is the question uh, if it is possible to adapt a dual link DVI. Uh, into the HDMI uh, input card is a, a dual link DVI. Yes, dual link DVI signal. I'm. I, I wanted to answer myself, uh, but I'm not hundred percent sure about that. 
so maybe you know better um well you can always use adapters for it um as i've said uh, the display port or the dvi um, version also works for it and um Okay. Um, and there are more questions. Is um, is the HDMI input card possible to run it with four four RGB four 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 color depth uh, in full resolution, so four uh, K sixty hertz? Yes, we have actually tested this. So um, it's a full full four K sixty at four 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 color level resolution. That uh, we have tested this on the on the server um so this is possible actually with two streams um so this card supports two 4k 60 signals so on each of those connectors you can input those um uh, resolutions mm -hmm. okay cool that was the the last question already thank you <laughs> if it's possible to run both uh, with uh, this high resolution thank you yes yes it is yeah um so wonderful let's get over uh, to the next card this would be the 3g sdi card um this one actually comes in three different editions either with one or two or four inputs but again all the information um uh, is the same <laughs> um regarding here the audio stuff um with the 3G SDI link, um, it is possible to embed 32 channels. So, of course, we can also de embed them and use them in Pandora's box. Um, for the resolutions, um, for the single, the dual, and the quad card, um, we support pretty much all the standard SD, HD, or 2K signals. So um, I've just written down some common SDI formats, which would be NTSC um, over here, the PAL version, the small HD version, the full HD and the 2K um, uh, resolution. For the quad card, there is a little bit of a specialty because here we can synchronize quadrants. I will explain this in a second. This ex uh, enables us to also input um, UHD or 4K signals. Um, so this one to uh, 160p, we can pretty much do everything between uh, 24 and 60 FPS. The synchronization, <clears throat> we have added the possibility to synchronize input feeds uh, when they are gen locked. This means that they need to have the same resolution and they need to have the same frame rate, of course, otherwise you cannot gen lock them and synchronize them. Um, this possibility is has been added since revision 5.7, I think. Uh, let me just double check. Yes, 5.7. And you need um, the update driver version for it as well. And if you do that, if you synchronize the input feeds, you can um do those mask and full setups that are quite common in the well television environment because the sdi signal itself cannot include any transparency information so you always have one um one full image and another black and white image and if you combine them and say all the white stuff in here is visible and the black one is not well then you have created some transparency information and you can put this signal then on top of another one of some background for example um, so this is possible but also we can uh, create larger textures so this is this when you stitch signals together so you have on the first port for example you would um, put in the the first quadrant the second the third and the fourth we stitch them all together and you have created a larger texture for example, a 4K one. Um, this would be all the information about the 3G SDI input card. Um, Thomas, have you? Are there any questions regarding that card? I think you covered it very good. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I'm very excited. Let's. Oh, sorry. I've <laughs> I've not quite gotten. One information um, about the synchronization for the dual card. Um, you can, of course, synchronize both feeds because there are only two. 
And for the quad card, you have two options. Either you synchronize the first and the second, plus the third and the fourth. So you have two pairs, or you synchronize all of them to create this one texture. So these are your options. But now, finally, we'll get over to the 12G card. This is it. Um, oops, hello. Um, looking at the inputs, we have in the middle here the 12G input, um, which also works as a 3G input. So this input auto, uh, detects automatically which kind of signal you have connected. If you've connected the 12, a 12G one, the other 3G inputs, this, this, and this one, you can connect, cannot connect any other source to it anymore, or it's not processed. If you connect a 3G signal, those ones work. So in total, you have again a quad 3G card, which we have seen already on the last slide. In this case, however, um, the connectors are micro BNC ones. Um, this is the only difference. In addition to the SDI ports, we also have an HDMI input up here, which we have seen just before that. Um, and again, it's a uh, the HDMI 2.1 input, uh, 2.0 input um, from the type A. It can also be converted to display port um, and again to DVI, just as we have uh, just as I've just as I have explained before. So those inputs actually explain this um, <laughs> this unholy long name up here, um, the 12G and quad 3G plus the HDMI board. The card itself is shipped with a couple of adapters. We have included four micro BNC adapters and a display port adapter. But again, as I've mentioned, the DVI conversion is also possible. Um, again, we have two simultaneous 4K60 streams with, uh, available with this card. The first stream can be input through the HDMI port up here. And here, all the information applies as for the HDMI card. So the same resolutions and the same information about the chroma subsampling. For the the second 4K stream can be input through the SDI part. So either you have one 12G signal or you have four 3G signals that can be then um, stitched together using our synchronization feature. So here the same resolutions and the, the described features apply just as you have seen with the quad 3G SDI card. Um, let me just double check whether I have forgotten something with this one. It's actually our 12, very first 12G solution. And um, the version that we will uh, support it with is version 641. And it will be released either today or tomorrow. Um, uh, so stay tuned for this update. Um, the next slide would cover any drivers. So, um, Thomas, have you ever, does anybody have any questions about the 12G card? Yes, uh, there mm -hmm. is a question about audio. So, is this, uh, can this card process audio? It does, uh, with the um, SDI part down here. So for the HDMI, the same applies as she has seen with the HDMI card, so no audio there. But for the 3G part, uh, it should be the same 32 channels. Right. And there are more questions coming in. Um, uh, mm -hmm. What does the Blackburst do? Do we have in, any information about that connector there? Um, this is a uh, connector where you can um, well, you use it to synchronize uh, or genlock the the signal, but we have not really tested it because we are using um, genlock signals by itself, and we can um, synchronize them using using our feature. So um, the connector is there, but we have actually never tested it. <laughs> Okay, cool. uh, I uh, also want to make my own um, comment on, on that. So because mm -hmm. I did this uh, this mistake by answering some questions uh, while you were f referring, 
So the mm -hmm. uh, synchronization, just to make it clear, has to be done before the input. So it has to come in synchronized and it, the synchronization will not happen on that input card. Just to make that clear again, because I, I did a, a mistake on, on an answer on the question. Sorry for that. So I hope I um, yes um, put that correct now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, to emphasize it again, the signals themselves must be gen locked. So we are not gen locking them by ourselves. Um, this is another technology. What we what we have uh, what has happened in our in the past revisions is even when you had gen locked signals in there, um, our render engine it didn't know that they had still to be a gen lock afterwards. So we read in the images and we put um, some effects for them on them, for example, and then we just um, spit them out for the graphic card and we we well simply the render engine didn't know that still they had to be gen locked in that way. So um, Thomas is right, they have to be gen locked be before um, and then we can synchronize them in our render engine. So it's simply what's happening in Panoris Box. Yeah, more questions coming in actually. So if uh, yeah, mm -hmm. if wonderful. Some time on that, uh, oh, and more. Uh, so uh, I think uh, there's a question for the drivers. That is something you will uh, go into now. I think. So mm -hmm. skip yeah, that let's maybe now. put it for later. If I've not answered it, uh, you can just um, yeah. tell me afterwards again. Mm -hmm. I keep it uh, uh, visible here, so um, I check later. Uh, right. And then we have. So we have used a specified SDI connector, or can I use one of that four? Uh, I think I don't understand correctly. I'm sorry, me neither. Mm, maybe you can specify a bit more. Uh, we will answer that, and maybe we hang on. Uh, if if you can put that question. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. it is whether you have to use the first, uh, this one for the second stream. This is just the naming. Maybe this was a little confusing. So if you have a 12G signal, it must go into this connector. If you only have, for example, one 3G signal that you want to process, you can put it into any of those connectors. My mouse keeps it, <laughs> keeps it disappear. So one, uh, so either this or this or this, or actually the first one as well for the 3G signal. It's just the way how it is named later on in Pandora's box. Um, but by using the the third one, it's, it's also okay. You don't have to use the first one necessarily. Uh, it's about the synchronization. Maybe that was the question. question. Um, so if you want to synchronize, you have to use the first pair or the second pair if you want to synchronize both or all yes. four of them to synchronize all four. That's I yes, think. yes. This is the same information as we have seen with the quad 3G card. So you can either synchronize two pairs, one and two, plus three and four, or you synchronize all four of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people keep uh, putting questions. That's nice. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so next question is, do the SDI mm -hmm. card support interlaced signals? Yes. Um, <laughs> I have not. Let me just maybe double check. But uh, thanks for that question. I actually also wanted to add that all the information can be read in the manual. The 12G chapter is also already uh, written, and I will upload it as soon, of course, as the revision. The 641 is released. So for the 12G card, I've already opened it. Um, you can see here, for example, some interlaced signals. So um, HD um, interlaced 60 is possible, mm, 50. Yeah. If you have any specific, or of course, NTSC is also interlaced. Um, if you have any specific resolution that is not listed in here, you can always write this one to our support team and ask whether this is included as well. Um, sometimes the resolutions were quite long and I just picked the very, the most important ones, let's say, or the largest ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me have a look on the clock. I think we have time for more questions. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, another question is, um, 
multiple SDI resolutions, are they possible on different connectors? So different resolutions on different connectors. If, if, of course, if you do not synchronize them, or if you do not have the need to synchronize them, you can, of course, use different um, resolutions there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So on all questions about driver updates, we will push to later point. Mm -hmm. I would also say this. In which order will the inputs appear? I think that's the question how they are named. I think that was already answered by you earlier, wasn't it? Um, I will show later on a screenshot of the manager and there you will see how they are named and the name refers to the name how they are in here. And mm. the order of, of yeah. the connectors on the uh, on the back plate of the of the card, isn't it? So it's all it's the name always is the same connector, isn't it? It's not yes. like the yes. output card, like the Nvidia card when you use extended screens that it changes uh, around if you change the setting um this is all, this always sticks uh with the same mm -hmm. connector yes so for the 12 g1 i'm not 100 percent sure i'm sorry i do not know whether there's any information next to it but for the 12 g1 it's it's for sure that the middle on the left side so this is why i've i've done the picture like this so that you can refer to it when looking at the back of your server or player That's it for now, so we can move on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the next slide is covering the driver information. Um, per default, all the cards are pre-installed on the hardware um, and the drivers can be found under the PASS C system. Um, it's a good idea from time to time to check for any updates um, in the download center um, on our website. Um, I think uh, Thomas can uh, forward you the link um, through the chat if you uh, do not know the Donald Center yet. Um, for example, if we include this, this, this feature like I've uh, described um, with the synchronization or the stitching, of course, this needs also to be done in the driver itself. So these are those occasions when um, we update the driver and then tell you uh, to use new drivers or when we go from a 32-bit system to a 64-bit system and all that. Um, with this version 641, again released today or tomorrow, we are starting to support the original Delta Cost drivers for the Delta Cost cards. Um, we are starting with version 6.14, so we have added this version to our driver package that you can download from the download center. Um, so for the 12G card, you need to use this driver version 6.14 from DeltaCast or of course any later one that will be released. Um, unfortunately, this DeltaCast driver does discontinue the DVI boards. Um, it also discontinues the very old, I think they're seven years old or so, um, HD SDI cards. I've not talking about them because we do not sell them um, anymore, but uh, if any customer has them still, um, they need to stick to the uh, driver version 601. That is the one that uh, the latest run from our side. Also included in the driver package. The other cards, 3G SDI and HDMI are supported in both versions. If you happen to have multiple cards in one single computer, they all run this one driver. So in other words, you cannot combine the DVI board and the 12G board because they rely on another driver version and cannot be combined. However, if you use different driver versions on separate machines, so if you are in a client um, uh, or in a master setup where you have different clients, that's not a problem at all. So this is how you can combine them. When using the new Delta Cast driver, the Windows Device Manager is changing a little bit because the cards are named now differently and they can be found in the Delta Cast folder. Um, with the 6.01 driver, they were called Kudux cards and they were found in the audio input uh, folder up there. 
This was so far my information regarding the drivers. Um, Thomas, when you check the questions about them, um, have I answered them or are there still some open ones? Uh, there are more incoming actually. Um, uh, when, uh, just a second, I have to, to read through mm -hmm. that and to translate some. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there um, is an input from a colleague um, that different manufacturers cannot use uh, different input cards over one system. Uh, so that's something we can a bit. I'm not very sure about that. Comment there, sorry. Um, you mean other, other live input cards? Um, well, I've, currently I've just covered those ones that uh, are sold directly um, through us. Um, and for other ones, uh, yeah, you have to... Um, I forgot the name, what they have to support. So in order for us to be able to see them. Dark Direct show, thank you. <laughs> if they are direct show cards, um, we you can also use them in Pandora's box. So if you want to buy another version and build them into your computer um, player or server, you can do that. Um, uh, of course, always keep in mind the warranty. Yeah, th and there's one more question. I have to figure out some uh, uh, something about it before I put it uh, mm -hmm. on all. Um, uh, so yeah, keep on if uh, all right. If there's some more things to cover, uh, not mm -hmm. much so far. Give me a bit of time. Okay. I have to figure something out and move on. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was one thing I wanted to say. Oh, of course, the driver package is also then uploaded to the donor center as soon as the 641 version is released. So you cannot find it right now, but in in, in a short time. Um, there was one thing I wanted to talk about. Um, delay. For all of the cards, um, we have always a delay between 80 milliseconds and 110 milliseconds. It depends a little bit on the format, on the frame rate, etc. But this is pretty much um, what you can uh, refer to, and it does not change when using the Delta Cast drivers or any so. Um, so it's caused in the in the render engine because we have to read in the signal. Um, we we must be then be able to put some effects on them and, and all that and then we write out the signal so um, in the minimum we need two and a half frames for, for doing all that but if you have larger formats we need a little more time but in total it's always between 80 and 110 milliseconds so um, my very last slide covers the software side of the live inputs um, as I'm in my home office and I'm only having my uh, laptop here, um, we didn't want to ship an entire server over uh, to my home office just for this purpose um, because the screenshots are doing the same for, for you. Um, when you open the, uh, this explains the master setup. So when you are starting your player or your server in standalone mode, you see in the assets tab under local a live inputs folder. And this one, for example, shows the um, oh, oh, see. <laughs> sorry, I was just confused by this naming. Uh, this one shows the 12G inputs. So here you have the first one plus the audio and the one, two, three other 3G SDI ports. And the last one was input number five with the HDMI. So those numbers refer to the numbers that I've put on the picture next to the 12G card that you have seen. Um, when you drag them from the assets tab over to the project tab, they are initialized there. And when selecting them there, you can go down to the inspector. You see them in here again with this naming. 
and you can click the configure button. In the configuration uh, window, you will see this information that applies to the card. So for the HDMI part, for example, you will see the choice whether you want to have the chroma, the U UHV or the RGB chroma subsampling 422 or 444. For the DVI part, you can say whether the input type should be automatically um, uh, detected or whether you want to stick to one fixed resolution. Mm and all that stuff can be done in the configuration. When you have done that, you can take the input from the project and then drag them onto a layer um, in the timeline. So this is absolutely the same process as putting a picture or a video there, it doesn't matter. Mm. One information about the version 641, we have optimized the way how we use the system performance. Um, before, we have always uh, used system performance, even if um, it was not assigned. This has changed now. No, wait a second. I'm confusing it uh, with something else right now. Uh, When, when you are not assigning it to a layer right now, we are not using any system performance anymore in version 6.4.1. Um, just a, a small optimization, especially because this is, su is supporting two 4K 60 signals just as the HDMI card, and um, we want to give you a little more headroom to use other um, content as well. Um, the same applies when you have a master client setup, um, only that in the assets tab, you would go open your client folder and then the live inputs and drag them in there. If you want to configure a live input that is um, existing on the client, you have to go over to the client and open the software there, yeah, which is of course already opened, but you um, go off down of your full screen and to see this windowed render a window and then you can click the configure live inputs button. Um, if you do it in the reverse order, uh, you will get a pop-up. So if you first start your client and want to configure the live inputs, it will tell you that it is not yet part of a master. So you first have to do the master th stuff and then go over to your client and click configure if you actually need it. In most cases, the configuration is uh, covers the standard applications. Um, so far, it is from my side. Um, Thomas, do you have any other questions? Yeah, there are many incoming questions so far. So um, mm -hmm. I think um, we will stay in that session for a bit longer and uh, answer those mm -hmm. questions for everybody or personally. Um, there's just mm -hmm. one thing I want to mention, um, as I tried earlier already, uh, the input from my colleague. Um, so for Pandora's Box, it's possible to use different client machines in the same network, in the same project, and use different input cards on those. So if you want to use, um, um, on, on certain uh, areas for, for your project, different uh, inputs, you can mix things up uh, so what Monina was referring to was to use these cards in one and the same device. So there are limits on using those cards on one and the same device, but if you have different devices connected to, to your Panoros Box network, you can of course use different drivers on different devices. So and make sure you can use all of your input cards. So that's something Absolutely. we uh, yes. have an, an advantage to our um, uh, yeah. So, and and uh, additional other. information that it, it was so clear to me that I didn't even mention it, but um, maybe uh, we should add it in here just to be clear. The live input exists on the client itself. It is not distributed like other content to other machines. So if you want to um, see a live input, live input to on a specific monitor that is connected on this client, uh, it only exists there. Um, so you cannot use the SDI signal from client number three on another client. Or uh, this also means that you do not see it in the manager preview. 
this is something that a lot of people stumble um, stumble about over. Um, you will, I think you just see an image um, in the manager preview. Um, yeah, just something. This is very inf important information. Otherwise, maybe we can we can do a webinar now about that. Uh, how how to put. Uh, the different inputs. So if you use one uh, video input for different clients, so you have to add them into one uh, uh, asset, which you can use. And there you can also add the local device to display a test pattern, for example, instead of uh, showing a live preview. Yes, um, I wanted to actually add a webinar about attaching and the file inspector, or rather the this file location table that you see in the file inspector. Um, you have, you might actually wait a second. It's this part down here. So um, not only when you work with live inputs, but only also when you work with pictures or videos, you see those remove, attach buttons down here. And um, some people wonder what they do and um, what does this directly, directory tell me what is the status telling me, like when it's saying completed or um, incomplete or something else? Um, how do I work with this table in there? I'm planning on a webinar on that information. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so I think the time is uh, pushing us to, to an end. So we will stay a few minutes uh, and uh, there's already a very positive feedback about the idea about doing an asset webinar. Uh, thank you. Um, so we will stay That's a few minutes know. online <laughs> and answer more questions. So uh, if you have more questions, you can keep putting them in and we try to uh, answer them. Then but we will stop the audio transmission for now and the video transmission. And thank you for joining. Uh, Martina, last words. And Thomas, of course. Uh, yes, thank you. I was a little bit excited. It was my first webinar, um, but I hope you uh, I've gotten all the technical information um, and it wasn't, um, yeah, it was still fun to watch and uh, to follow us. I hope you're all at home and that you're all healthy. Um, and we are looking forward to welcoming you to the tomorrow's webinar also. So as Thomas said, we will quit uh, the video stream right now, but we are still online and we will answer your questions if you have any. Oh, as I'm seeing the links, I forgot the last slide, haha. -ha. Um, as always, if you've seen the other webinars already, um, the schedule um, what uh, and the dates, what is covered on that date um, can be seen on our website. If you have any ideas um, for this format that we are right now trying out, uh, you can go to our forum. The help file, as I've shown you, is online. You can see all the information in there as well and um, all the webinars are recorded and we will upload them in a short time to our YouTube channel so you can follow them as well for example if you are in a different time zone or um, if you want to re-see a video. All right um, so that should be it. Have a nice day and uh, see you soon again. <laughs> Bye! Yes. <laughs>